Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Today we're talking about eight passengers. I found another, someone had sent me a video and then someone sent me another video and I started researching. Lots of people compile videos about Ruby and how terrible of a mother she is and how much she's willing to exploit her children. We talk about Ruby a lot. She's quite a popular um, topic in this anti-family vlogger community. She skates by because she's a Mormon. She seems like they're, you know, innocent, but they're one of the worst exploiters of all time. Let's not forget to take PPP loans. And there's some kind of beef going on with her family. We don't know what it is yet. I don't know if we'll ever know, but there's beef in them Mormon family streets. So before we get off to that, we're gonna do a little, I'm not gonna do a major dance. I'm pretty tired, but we are gonna, we are gonna click to spin. We are gonna spin for the YouTubers and uh, see if someone can win something. Yeah, baby. Mm. Yeah. Michelle Anderson. Michelle Anderson. Let's see what you win. Man, why does nobody win anything? What's wrong with you people? Get a life. You win a bracelet though, which is not terrible, but it's just not, it's not good enough. Let's go with the Patreons. Yeah, baby. Oh. You, me, me, you, me, you, me. No, okay. Katie Douglas. Come on, Katie, win a prize. Just win a prize. Holy Lipton. This thing is rigged, but not by me. Let's go. Before we get going, everybody, don't forget that the Dad Challenge podcast has a store. Look at the things you can buy at the Dad Challenge store. Um, I'm going to be doing a live soon. I love doing lives. I'm going to be doing another fireside coming up soon, hopefully this weekend if I have some time. Um, but we're going to be doing some, uh, I like designing emojis with something in my lives, but I want to do some more shirts. If you guys have some ideas for shirts, let me know. I've got the Aloha pineapple one that you guys can get. Look at the Chachi. The Chachi is like the main staple. Chachi is definitely the shirts I sell. So the shirts I give away, I really love. We got the DCP swearing pillow. I mean, it's not just a myth. You can buy a Dad Challenge podcast swearing pillow and it says here the DCC swearing pillow in the back says swear here there's literally a space to swear so you can get that we get all kinds of cuts and like fashionable items you can get full like full spread I love dad bods which is like you need that fall is coming you guys are gonna need your hoodie your bunny hug your sweater whatever the case your tights whatever they look good it's quality products I think the shipping is pretty good you get the dad Sean Sh look there's so much merch you can get Anyway, there's some, uh, I love mommy vloggers said no one. That's a good one. That's funny. You're not my real dad. That I, I would wear that shirt. That is a good shirt. Tons and tons and tons and tons of merch. Pretty good prices. I guess the K King Sam. You, I mean, they have tights for King Sam on your butt. Why would you not want that? King Sam is the snuggle is real. And then we got one King Sam. We got merch. We got mouse. We got Aloha pineapples. We got it all here, everybody. We got mugs and cups and stickers and the DCP snark week, which is going to go away pretty soon. So that's what we have. Just wanted to remind you guys. That's one way you can support this channel. Head over and buy yourself a t-shirt or someone for someone in your life for Christmas or whatever. That's there waiting for you. Thank you. So if you buy one of those, I will sing you a song. No, I won't. Maybe I will. We'll see. If you buy like a bunch of stuff, I'll sing you a song. How about that? Anyway, let's get right to the shit show that is Ruby Frank because, ugh, right? Right? See, Ruby's nothing if she's not consistently a dummy, right? If she's not consistently one of the worst moms in the world. We've talked about her a lot where her daughter was hungry at school. She was a five-year-old and her mom was like, I'm not going to bring her lunch. And she's like, bring her lunch. And she's like, well, she's five. We talked about how her, friends, her son has no friends and they cried about it, how he was 
acting out like any normal teenage boy acts out and they sent him off to a like scared straight Mormon camp where he almost died um, he had to sleep on a beanbag chair they took the door off the bathroom all that kind of stuff we talk about her she can always talks about her daughter's acne which is like she definitely has favorites we talked about her daughter Sherry who said she doesn't want to be on YouTube anymore but she's gonna be on YouTube I don't know they had enough of it but basically this family is just a big gong show and we know it don't lie so we're gonna open up this one the one video that there's a couple that kind of came out so there's this eight passengers car Look crash so there's this 10 minute video like right before school where they clearly have no idea okay how to set an aperture on an automatic camera. And don't forget, look at Sherry. She's got one of those uh, Canon G7Xs ready to go to school with her. They vlog at school, okay? So this family is all into it. Okay, so I'm not gonna show the whole video because it's 10 minutes long, but basically she's driving her kids to school and I haven't even seen this. I've only seen the part where she gets out. But she's driving and vlogging, which is stupid, in their like $50,000, $60,000 van because they have such a giant family because clearly his pullout game is weak. But they're driving and she's doing this, but I want to show I want to show you from an editing standpoint what happens here because she wasn't filming when this accident happened. The most disgusting thing about what you're going to watch here today is how ex is how excited she gets when something tragic happens. Okay, watch this. The pictures and keeping everyone on track. Okay. You're hearing this tire squealing, rocks, all this stuff happening, okay? This is an edit she put in there. It wasn't there. She didn't swerve. There was no nothing going on. They edited that sound in there, which is absolutely effing disgusting, okay? Because watch what happens next. They had to put that in there because the camera wasn't on when what just happened happened. Watch. Okay. That's all put in there fake. That none of that none of those sounds were in there. They put that in there. Is everyone okay? Okay. So she turns the first thing she does, there's an accident on the highway. She pulls over and she turns the camera on. That is Ruby Frank's number one priority. Not that if her kids are okay, because what happens first in the sequence? Camera's on, then she asks her kids. You tell me what you think is her priority here. Oh my gosh, are we hit? Are we hit? She knows she's not hit, first of all. Are they okay? Are they okay? Are you okay? First of all, let me stop you there. I hope this kid comes out in public and tells us exactly what happened. Because Sherry just pulled over, or because Ruby just pulls over here. She might have seen it, it might have happened around her, but nothing happened to her. But she inserts herself right into the middle of this like she's the victim. And she didn't call the police first. Here's the sequence of events. She picks up the camera, turns it on. Then she asks her kids if they're okay. Then she gets out to ask this guy, okay. First you do, first thing you do is you call the police in an accident. Does none of the things. She is just putting this guy on camera, and I know he's in public and you're allowed to do that, but she, I hope she got his permission, I hope she got this other guy's permission. He was just in an accident, and I, I don't think she got their permission to put them in their vlog, and I hope this person comes forward. You're okay? okay. I'm okay. You're fine, nothing happened to you, and your shitty ass logo on your van. Just leave your kids in the van on the highway. Whatever. Look at her, she's filming her, like, guys, you gotta see what I'm seeing here. She's filming herself, this is so dramatic. She knows she's gonna get massive, massive hits on this video. This is going to be an insane boost in, in sub subscribers. This is gonna be a ton of money. I wanna know how many friggin', uh, let's see how many views she got on this video. Let's take a look. Car crash in the first, this was two years ago this happened, 6.2 million views. If I go into their freaking eight passengers little wormhole here and go to the videos and sort by by most popular, I bet you that's going to be in the top 10. Right there. Number <laughs> number 10. It's right at it's number 10. 6.2 million views, okay? That is a huge huge number of views and money and everything else and she knows this while she's filming this is so what makes this so disgusting she puts the camera why are you have a camera are you really are you really there to help people or are you there to capture this for your content this is what sherry this is why ruby frank is one of the most disgusting not just family vloggers 
but people that exists, that they would use someone else's accident, probably life-threatening accident, for their own content. I hope she gets sued. Yeah, they're all okay. You're the only one freaking out here. These guys are like, yeah, we're good. Just an accident. We're all safe. She's one freaking out because she needs to add that dramatic thing to the to the video, right? She has to add that. This tire blue, it looks like the tire blue. Okay. And I was I right? Is this guy not wondering why are you carrying a camera, weird lady with ugly lipstick? What is going on here? And is he not wondering? Does she pay him? I don't know. If I was me, I'd be like, lady, why do you have a camera on? This is like are you okay? I, know, I, I don't even remember what happened. She, she doesn't even know what happened. She just saw the accident, pulled over, got her camera out and said, did we get hit? Did we, you obviously didn't get hit, dumbass. You would have known if you were hit. I'm upset because she's using other people's tragedy for her own gains. Do you guys see how disgusting this is? How family vloggers will stop at nothing to get content to fill their pockets full of money. This is not even her kids, you know, obviously the whole video is about her kids, but she is literally exploiting other people's misery and accidents and everything else for her own gain. Are they okay? Everyone's okay. Russell, it's okay. Wait, to hear what she's about to say right here. What happened? It's okay. Everyone's safe. It's okay. You guys involved in the accident? We... Don't lie to them. I was driving and it looked like the blue car... So no, you were not involved in the accident at all. She just saw she's she's talking to a police officer here, and she was she can't lie because she's a Mormon. Hopefully, but she lies anyway. But she's like, no, I was not involved. But I'm filming it. I don't think so. Like I you didn't. Unbelievable how selfish this woman is. The guy in front of me, his tire blue. Or the one no, the, the guy who's now behind me, his tire blue, but he was in front of me. And the red truck was going, I don't know where the red truck was, but it had to veer in, in front and get off. So it hit left. I don't know. I, <sighs> I just know that the blue car. So you didn't see shit, is what you're telling me. Car had a tire blow, and I had to get out of its way. He hits the sign, he took the sign out. Russell. He's crying, first of all. This was my first car. This kid is like, I want to point out something. This kid is having a... <laughs> what what irks me so much is Russell, I think his name is, is literally bawling his eyes out. He is scared for his life. He is so distraught right now. And she can think of nothing but filming this. Can think of... She doesn't, she doesn't console him. There's no hugs. There's no like, we're going to be okay. It's all good. Nobody's hurt. She doesn't do any of that stuff. He's just there, broken. This kid is broken. It breaks my heart because of my little dude, who's the same age as this guy, was like this. It would break my effing heart. And she doesn't give a shit. And you know what? I want to tell you something. And I want you to really listen. Oh my. We should have been in that crash. What the f are you thinking when you just said that to your children? Specifically, this little kid who is having a meltdown, who is very scared. You just told your kids we should have been in that crash. Why would you say that? What the F is wrong with you? First of all, she changed the camera angle. She started here, then she did this so you can see her face. You guys have to see all the other things, the peripherals around this insanity so that you can see how bad it actually is. It's not just like one roll. She's cutting. She, ting, she turned the camera on. She's the accident. Like this is the most disgusting thing I've seen here yet. Most disgusting thing I've seen that Ruby do. There I don't know how we avoided getting hit, but you know what? There is not a single scratch on our car. There is not one person who got whiplash. And do you know why? Why? Because we said our prayers this morning. You've got to be effing kidding me right now. I have not seen this. I cannot believe she just said that. And that is coming from a guy who is an ex-pastor, okay? Who still believes in Jesus. I cannot believe she just said that. Now, there's a few reasons that makes what she just said there absolutely disgustingly ugly, okay? First, she took this moment of atrocity, and her kids are scared, to say, hey, look, 
If you don't say your prayers, this could happen to you. She's forcing this religious, and don't forget they're Mormons. And you know how I feel about Mormons. It's bullshit, okay? Not only do they believe in craziness, but they do this to their kids. They indoctrinate their kids beyond anything. They're, Mormon kids likely won't ever even hang out with normal kids. They only hang out with their Mormons. But for her saying that to me, specific, and I, again, I come from this world, from this Christian world. I would never say that to my children. Hey, do you know why we didn't just die right now? Because we said our prayers this morning. Do you know how disgusting that is that she just said that? Again, from someone who believes. Don't ever, ever tell that to your children. Because what happens then if a kid does say his prayers? Okay? And then he gets hurt or she gets hurt. What are you going to, mom, I said my prayers. Why did I get hurt? How disgusting of you and theologically unsound you are. And your freaking husband teaches at a, a Christian Mormon university. How disgusting. Two, you don't do this. You don't ever say something like that because why would you scare them even more than they're already scared? Why do you need to evoke more emotion out of them and put the camera up your nostrils like that? This is, I am... I'm upset right now. I'm so angry. And we tried our best to do what Heavenly Father Look at wanted this us kid. to do. What did you do? What did you do that the Heavenly Father you wanted you to do? What did Joseph Smith tell you to do there? All you did was pull over because you saw an accident and get your camera out. And look at this kid. Uh, the reason I'm showing you their faces is because you need to see this. Okay? This is the, of all the things that Ruby does uh, that, are, that I can consider child abuse, and there's a bunch, this is one of the most disgusting psychological abuses I've ever seen of children on, on this YouTube platform. This kid is, d like, broken. He is broken, and she just keeps egging him on and egging him on and saying things like that. Holy shit, people, you should all be so upset with this. You should go, like... Let's say it. And you know what? Nobody's hurt. And I know it's because the Lord is watching out for our family and for others. And again, don't forget everybody during this whole thing when she's having this heart to heart with her children. This is on her face. The camera is on her face the whole time. She is not doing this for anybody but for herself and the YouTube algorithm and money, 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 money. The reason these people are so predatory as well is because they come across innocent. They come across, oh, we're eight passengers. We wear frocks and shit. We don't, you know, we don't party and all that stuff. We give COVID to neighbors. But they, they come across as innocent, and that's why they're more dangerous. At least when it comes to people like Piper Raquel, you know, LeBrantz, and all these other people like Daniel Cohen, at least they're like forefront that they don't give a shit that they're exploiting their kids. They're more dangerous because they look innocent and on the outside it looks it. But you have to understand when there's cameras being touched and put in place in your face and when she's talking, it's all fake. And it's all for this. And that kid is destroyed right now. And we're okay. And we're going to get to school. Mom. Okay. Can we not go right now? I'm going to go. <laughs> I know it was a little like, Chad's like, can we just skip school? <laughs> I would, <laughs> Chad, you should be in sales or like whatever. That was a solid try to leverage that. I would, I would have done the same thing. Just not going to say, it's good. We'll ask the police officer if we can go or if he needs us to stay. No, you don't need to stay. You weren't, you didn't see, you didn't even, you said you didn't even see what happened. You literally just pulled over to capitalize on someone else's craziness. Sometimes they like us to stay, to be a witness. Oh my gosh. She's just loving this. 6.2 million views, by the way. 50 grand? Probably made 50 grand off this video. A statement for the police. <laughs> Dear police, here's what I saw. I saw a tire and then I pulled over and I got my camera out. Does the police not ask why you're filming this? Like, again, that guy that was in the accident, all those people, I hope that they know that either they collect on this video because they are the ones in it. I don't know if they're allowed to do that or tell her to cease and take it down. I don't know. It's so exploitative. I just, not only does she exploit her own children, obviously, but is 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 willing to exploit anybody. Ruby Frank is disgusting. And a friend is gonna pick up the kids off the freeway and finish. Oh, the that's nice. School. And you're still making them go to school. Why is she crying? She wasn't in the accidents. Nothing. 
She's been there for an hour at this point. She's just, this is all fake right now. This is fake. And poor Russell, his first day at school, and he has to be involved in a car accident. He wasn't involved in a car accident, Ruby. You guys were not involved. You just saw it. And you, and it, and you said you didn't even really see it. So you just pulled over is all you did there. Ruby is a liar. This is a lie. I can see our neighbor up here, way up there, picking up the kids. You just let your kids walk up? Okay. Wow. I'm going to finish up here, give my statement, and then hopefully meet the kids up at the school and explain what happened. Honey, are you okay? I thought you went with your brothers and sisters. I didn't know you were... She's out on the highway, her kid's going to get a ride, and she leaves her little girl in the car on the highway. Doesn't even know her child is in the van. What else do you guys need to see? I mean, for real. Why do these people have fans? You know who their fans are? They're other Mormons who only watch Mormon content because it's all they're allowed to watch and that's what they're told to watch. That's what they capitalize. They capitalize on the Mormon market. That's all they do. And it's shit. Still in here. Look at me. Look at me your hand. It's okay. You're safe. It's Holy gonna be frick. okay. Listen to the music. Guys, listen to the production. I'm just I'm married 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 to the other car is involved. I'm grateful we're all safe. How's my car my office at time? I guess you're not a very good driver. <laughs> Well, she cut there. She looked, did you see the look she just gave her daughter for saying that? I want to point that out to you. This was not my fault. Yeah, you were not involved in any of this. This was nobody's fault. You all right? Yeah, okay. yeah. We'll get you out of here. I'll go ahead and slow out the traffic and let you back on the road. Huh? <laughs> Marika. <laughs> I jumped. Hell. What's with the music? Chill out. This isn't like it's not a Holocaust film. Relax. So today's video is obviously about how terrible a parent Ruby Frank is. Okay. So the other video that someone sent me was this one here. It's called Night Before. I'm giving you girls a spa. Pretty sure this is the video of the night before they went on that drive, by the way. Just pointing that out. Wanted to show you guys that. But I gotta find the spot where she says the thing she says. I look like I coordinated my lips with your shirt. <laughs> you look like you ate someone's heart. That's what it looks like. <laughs> daughter doesn't like her, by the way. Her daughter does not. Ruby, of all the family vloggers I cover, the one thing I notice the most about Ruby and a lot of the family vloggers is that their kids absolutely do not have a good relationship with their parents and generally the main person of the channel. It's generally the dad they have a better relationship with. James Stoffer, Mike Christopher was, you could tell that the, the dynamic between the mom, generally the center of these channels and the kids is way different and here's why. The mom is always the one with the camera, the one who's always saying, do this, do this, do this, let's do this, let's do this. They're always the driver. They're always making the kids work. It's never a relationship without the camera. The dads are generally not. They are sometimes, but not all the time. If you look at all these videos, Weiss Life is one of them. When the 16-year-old daughter that's the, the, is the main bio daughter of the mom, but not the dad, uh, Gabrielle Weiss, she hates her, both of them. Like, I talked to her family, not even just her bio dad. I've talked to her other family members and neighbors that have been to their house and they all hate their mom, okay? Most of these kids either, if they're young, they, they still think their parents are on the moon, but as they get older, they despise their parents. The video of Tiffany Raquel we're gonna do soon, where Tiffany makes out with a 17 year old boy on a live stream and then Piper Raquel pulls her face off angrily. Not only did Tiffany Raquel do something completely illegal and, and she didn't like, ask for this kid, she didn't ask for consent. It doesn't even matter, the kid is 17. She made out with him and Piper Raquel pulled his face off. Danielle Cohn has publicly fought with her mother a million times. They don't hate her, they dislike her a lot. I have been dreading turning the camera on today. I doubt I've it. Literally been putting it off and not wanting to do it. Yeah, uh, this I gotta hear. Cause I'm really scared. I feel like this year going back to school feels different than any other year and I think it's because in my gut I know that like this is a this is the last year
Last year for what? Ugh. Kids like, yeah, cry. Cry, bish. Last year, what? I wasn't gonna cry. Now you're probably like, no, I don't, I don't wanna sit by you. Yeah, <laughs> she is. She's been saying that the whole time. No, I'm like, I'm trying to say, this is the last year that all of yeah. us are, might be able to stay calm. And so next year, we're probably gonna be calm. You get it, huh? Yeah. yeah, thank God. <laughs> hey, I'm a parent. I'm like, hey, yeah, kindergarten starts. What will I do with all this spare time? The five minutes I have in the morning now without the kids. Like, I don't, I think Kath, I think my wife cried, cried too in West Indian's first day of school. I get it. I just, dads are different, I guess. I'm just like, yeah, have fun. Five, bye. <laughs> oh, chill. Chill, lipstick. Oh, you, <laughs> I didn't know you were home. Okay. Comes the back. Chill with the snot. What I'm trying to say is... Please, say it. When I started blogging and making record of our family... Making record. Shut up. I hate this stupid-ass excuse they all say this. Oh, making record. It, Ma but, well, good, because you've made a record of how terrible of a pair you are. So thanks. It was because there was so much going on all the time. Okay. I would wake up to my kids waking up every morning at like six. It's creepy. And it was non-stop go. Non-stop. Get and to the all point. My kids were under my care. And they still are. So what? Oh, chill. You... This is the last year that I have kids at home. And it'll just be Eve. When I started vlogging, it was like... Thanks, Eve. Is Eve not okay? That sounds rude. Like Chad, I was homeschooling him, and it was Eve and Russell, and like even Julie was home a lot. And now everyone's come up with like the sports they want to do. Everyone's like settled into an instrument they want to play. Here's here's what's happening, Ruby. Your kids are like, we gotta find other shit to do. I do not want to vlog all day long. I need to get out of this house. I need to have friends. I need to go do extra, extra, I was say extra terrestrial activities, extracurricular activities. They, they're, they are literally finding ways to get away from you. You have to see that, right? You see that. I hope you're seeing that. Everyone is just, they are go, go, going. Yeah. Sherry is never home except Can you blame her? Down the stairs and she like, Lurks in the shadows, <laughs> <laughs> but like, like the kids are just always going, and my house is so quiet. Good, All use the it. The kids don't really need me in the same way that they used to. They get their own drinks if they're hungry. They oh, get their own lunch. Okay. Um, if it's dinner time and I haven't gotten around. Yeah, they get their lunch. Don't forget, she just said that her five-year-old gets her own lunch. Her kids, from the moment they go to school, are responsible for everything themselves. She's like, oh, my kids don't need me. Your kids don't need you because you make them do everything anyway. What is she saying here? Ruby is the laziest, most negligent parent I've covered thus far on the Dad Challenge podcast. And don't forget, she even says things like, when you're 18, you're gone. Like, the, And Sherry's like, bye. <laughs> so she has all these hard set rules. She doesn't pay her kids. There's no money for them, even though they're literally the star of the vlog. And you're going to hear in a second her actually admit, say the quiet part out loud that family vloggers rarely will say. They're making dinner. They know how to make their own dinner. And like, I've raised them to be very independent, which is good. Let me stop you there. You've raised them to be independent because you don't do anything. You've raised them as a lazy ass. You've raised them to do everything because you will do nothing. Because you would prefer to do this. You would prefer to put their privacy on the internet, to make videos, to make tons of money doing those videos, to take PPP loans. You would rather do that, to spread COVID, okay? To spread misinformation about your shitty ass religion. Okay, you would rather do that. And so your kids maybe weren't raised that way, but were forced to grow up faster because you were negligent as a parent. Might drop, but not on the ground because they're expensive. But it's, it's just a different stage of life that I'm going into. Part of me wonders what our vlogs are going to look like too. Like, it used to be that I would turn on the camera at any given time of the day. Yeah, we know. Any time I could randomly just turn on the camera, and like, yeah. something would be going on. Something worth filming. And now it's like, 
always quiet. I'm like, what am I going to film today? Like, cover your mouth when you cough. Teach you, you talk about your kids being independent, but you don't tell them to cover their mouth when they cough? That's that's 101, especially during COVID. Kids are so quiet. What am I going to... And so, like, part of me is really fearful that, like, I'm not going to have any content because my content is all going to school. And so... Did you hear that, everybody? Finally, somebody admits it. I'm not going to have any content because all of my content is going to school. Let's just rewind that little bit again and hear it again. And so, like, part of me mm -hmm. is really fearful that, like, I'm not going to have any content because my content is all going to school. And so I'm only going to have enough content to feel like maybe one or two days a week instead of right now we're doing five days a week. Or the kids. Did you guys hear that again? Oh my gosh. I'm only going to have enough content in two days a week, not five full days a week. So she's not, she's admitted two things here. One, that she has no content without her kids. Okay. Her kids are her content. They're sitting here beside her, by the way, and she's calling them content. Okay. Two, she admits that they do five videos a week. Do you know how hard it is to do five videos a week of content? Not for me, because I sit in one position and I speak into a camera. It's very easy for me to do five days a week, right? I sit here and I do it. It's very simple. But they have to take a camera everywhere. They're going places. They're doing videos. They have to come up with content. They're making shit up. They're stopping in accidents to film it. They're doing everything. It is very difficult to get five full videos a week without coercing your children without forcing them to work. So they go to school, they come home, they work because they're doing homework or they're doing vlogs or whatever the case. She forces her kids to do five days a week of content. And she's crying not because they're going back to school, she's crying because her content is going back to school. Hear it. Do not forget that she said that. Is even gonna wanna continue doing it the kid, as the kids move out? Like, it's just... They're not. This is the last year before all of these big changes are really going to hit me hard. And I really I hope to take advantage of this your shit falls apart. Enjoy being a mom. <laughs> so promise you'll still watch. Even <laughs> when it gets really boring. It the whole sh story, girl, and you seem nice. But your whole vlog is boring. Nothing you guys do is fun, exciting. Your mother is to blame for that, obviously. You, I don't, again, only Mormons must watch this shit because who else would watch any of this garbage? Every vlog I do, Bits of Bish yesterday, we did her video. Who in their right mind is sitting there riveted to the screen watching her talk about champagne brushed nickel handles? And, and here's my linen closet. Who, I just, I, I can't understand the demographic of people who actually watch this shit. It's, I don't know. Anyway. Then there's this one video, and I want to shout out the channel maker who did this. Because it's a small channel who put this together, and I want to make sure I'm giving them the proper credit. So it's eight passengers being abusive for 13 minutes straight. And it's by London underscore edits. And it's someone who, who I don't know who this person is. Hey besties, this video is done amazing. It's one of my very first edit videos. Good for you, London. Everybody go subscribe to London edits and give her your view. I think it's a her. Um, Go subscribe because she's putting these videos because 100,000 views on this video and she only has 380 subscribers. She's not going to be monetized without 1,000 subscribers. She's doing the Lord's work here by calling these people out. I think it's a she. But I want you guys to go while I cover this video that she put together and go subscribe to London underscore edits at YouTube. I'll subscribe right now and make sure you go over there because she put this together for me and I want to appreciate her. So do that. But I want to show you some stuff where she puts this purposely. I look like the creepy teenager. So the question is who wore it best? Sherry. Who, who's got the best dress? Sherry, let's see yours. <laughs> Sherry. <Okay. laughs> Julie, I'm not even gonna let you leave like my bedroom in this. This is horrible. She's 11 years old, but she looks like she's 21. Let's point out that Sherry's doing this on purpose. I have an 11 year old, but she looks like she's 21. I'm not gonna let you leave this, this bathroom with this dress on, but what I will do is show our, what, 3 million subscribers? I'll show the entire internet that it will be on there forever and all the playlists you're going to be part of. You can't leave the house, but we can show everybody on the channel. Logic, <laughs> there's none there. You're dumb, and I hate you. How did you get makeup on? I don't know. <laughs> you got makeup on her butt. <laughs> These kids are so homeschool awkward. This is why I was scared about homeschooling. And I might and she'd go down that route. But this is my impression of what I take away from the, all the homeschoolers I've ever known in my life. This is... 
this is their socially awkward because this they are only their own friends all of my girls wear size 14 they're all different shapes chill with the eyebrows there weirdo so and and they're all at different so the person's saying not the fat shame she says they're all different shapes so basically she's saying some of them are like look like they're 21 when they're 11 some of them are not she is this is this i agree with this london edits She's fat shaming. Different levels of maturity, yet they all wear a size 14. If you are a size 14, here are your options. First of all, why does the internet, oh my God, why does the internet have to know what size your daughters are? Unicorn with- And the, that you're rubbing her chest on YouTube. Oh my God, I haven't seen this before. What the hell, Ruby? Flippy little sequence. Unbelievable. We shopping for Sherry and this is what we found. Well, okay. You can okay. also find- Get me. I was trying to take dinner out to the Ooh. fridge. No, not that. I'm so sad. Don't come down here. It's all broken. I bought the. Thank you, honey. Are you sad for me? Go get it yourself, then, loser. This is my favorite casserole dish in the world. <laughs> oh, oh, if I get your name, I'll. I'll get, you, I'll get you one even if it's a 2,001 outfit. He didn't break, his, her kids are scared of her. He didn't even break the thing. He's like, I'll buy you one even if it's $2,000. She broke her casserole dish and she's filming the shame that she's, again, this person's right. Not her, literally she's making her kid feel like a piece of crap for dropping her favorite casserole dish. You know what, if, if you go get your kid to get something that's breakable, if that's your favorite thing and it's very valuable to you, why would you let a kid go get it? Ruby, it's your fault, and you shouldn't be shaming her and putting it on video. Oh my gosh! It's turned into a Ruby... This turned into a Ruby roast, and she deserves it. Are you really crying? Why is he crying? Russell? Oh, honey. Oh, honey. If I get your name... Are you crying? Let me film it. This was my favorite casserole dish, oh and it had gosh. a lot of meaning to me. You're crying, Russell? You bro you're broken down about this? So maybe Russell broke it. And now she's like, oh, you're crying? Well, here, you should cry more because this was my favorite casserole dish. And it means real it meant a lot to me. While he's crying, instead of saying, hey, you know what, you know what, Russell? It's a it's an effing casserole dish. We make millions of dollars filming your life. You, I, you know what? You, I make money off you. Don't worry about it. It's an effing casserole dish, Ruby. You're disgusting. And it was a I was trying to do it one-handed, and I went to open the fridge, and it was more than I could handle. She's nasty. And you know what? I'm so grateful. It's just a casserole dish. Film it, film it, film it. And that's not my kids. What oh my the heck is she saying? I was looking and looking and looking for Eve, and I was like, why isn't Eve at the dinner table yet? She usually comes to dinner as soon as I call her. And then I go looking outside. We've been looking for 30 straight minutes for her, and I was starting to get worried. And I was like, okay. For 30 minutes? Yeah, you should start getting worried for five minutes. If I can't find my child, I'm a wreck. Weston was, where was he? he was in a, I think it was made a fort in the closet and he didn't tell anybody. Five minutes. I'm calling wife. Where the app? Ah, ah. He couldn't hear me because he had his iPad under the blankets in the closet. I freaked. It was only like, I couldn't find him for five minutes and I freaked. 30 minutes? We're going to start calling around in the neighborhood and if I can't find Eve. So she hasn't found her yet. 20 minutes. I'm calling the police. And then I found this. You only got a little gist of it on camera. All of the discipline takes place off camera. But... Oh, sure it does. Except for when you make Chad go to a scared straight camp. ...sequences is she will not be getting her nails painted for a solid month. And that's like her oh. favorite thing is to have me do her nails. And she's going to have to go... So you're not going to... Okay, so here she's like, all the punishment happens off camera. But I just told you what the punishment was. Oh. Thanks. Dumbass. Without for a month until she learns. Just like, hey, I'm not going to let you out in that dress, but I'll show the entire internet. That she's not old enough to Ruby, you are dumb. Did you go to school? How are you this dumb? How, Ruby, explain to me how you are this obtuse. Do this yet by herself. All right, verdict is in. We saved the floor. It came off the tile okay. But I think my rug. Oh no, your rug. Is totaled. But aren't you glad it happened that way and not the other way around? What was the other way around? What's with the music? Not the tile, okay. Why, not? why are you? Why do they always play like Schindler's List music? It's it's it's. 
I, I okay, Ruby is very strict. I think I'm a pretty strict parent, but at the same time, if this happens to me, I'm like, ah, whatever. There are things I'm just like, what, what what can you do? It happened, let's move on. But Ruby is like, for the smallest instances, instances she is like a friggin' crazy person. I'm glad I came off the tile and-, and So you have to look at the bright side. Sherry's the parent here, by the way, I'd like to point out. Sherry's the one that's like, hey, it's all good. And Ruby's like, no, no. Heads will roll. Thank you, Sherry. The tile is good, and it would have been a lot more expensive. Sherry hates her mom. replace at most a $100 rug. $100 rug? Where the shit did you get that rug? It's not the $100. Yeah, it's $5 rug. at Walmart. Chill. Not that expensive. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. We don't do punishments on camera, though. Come here. Sorry, Mom. Sorry for what? I'm sorry for um making a mess and She doesn't do punishments on camera, but she will force her kids to apologize to her on camera. Are you guys seeing how gross this lady is? Oh you guys you guys might have you might have money, you might have won, you know, the money lottery when you were born into a family of money, but you were born into a shitty ass parent here. Sorry, kids. I am more upset that you came in Again, there's nothing wrong literally what she's doing here. Like, if the camera wasn't on, okay? If the kid's coming up to apologize and all that stuff, this is nothing wrong with this in general, okay? But again, the exploitation of putting it all on camera. Ruby is in, feels like she's entitled. She's the star. And when she, when something happens in her world, she is the star. Don't forget, she's. I think she's doing, like, parenting coaching or some shit. Again, none of this stuff ever needs to be on camera. And the fact that she put it on camera... Makes it all null and void. Any of the good stuff that actually happens. <laughs> You've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> I'm gonna my broom back like two weeks ago. He's been sleeping on a beanbag for eight months. This we've covered this before, but you guys, a lot of you are new to the channel. Ruby Frank, when he got back from his camp, the thing they sent him away for, and I talked about in my other video that likely he just got caught being a normal teenage boy, if you know what I'm saying, five knuckle shuffling. Uh, Mormons, you cannot masturbate in Mormon culture. Okay, women, men, nobody. Not allowed to do it. It's like a sin. Big time. Chad was likely just becoming a normal teenage boy. Okay. And they sent him off to a camp for months and months and months. Okay. Even I think it was during school year too. It's crazy. Okay. Went so far as to send him off. He looked like he was lost weight and everything else. Okay. They didn't tell anybody until later. They made content like crazy out of it. They get him back. He plays a prank on his brother, which was kind of funny, but at the same time, I would have been pissed too. Um, and then they put him on a beanbag chair in the basement, no bed, no bedroom, for eight months and admit it on camera, and nobody does anything about it? CPS isn't called? What the F? Uh, I'll give you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. First of all, there's never such a thing, and there should never, ever, 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 ever be a punishment for a teenager to lose your bedroom. That is prison. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's in my head. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I think it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he was like, what? And he's all happy. Has his sunglasses on. And I was like, you're not going to Disneyland. And he started crying. And he I mean, it's... <laughs> Like that's kind of a brother thing. I get that's 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 gross, but it's funny and not. But I get why they. I, I get if Tristan would have done that to Weston or whatever in my family, Tristan would have been like, "You're grounded for sure." But eight months on a beanbag chair for pr playing it for playing a prank. <laughs> and then you went back to bed in tears, and then. So uh, that that was that was <laughs> nice fun, and it's been over a year, mm -hmm. and um, I still have no intention of returning a phone. Abby, we so anyway, this whole video we talked about, uh, they took the bathroom door off. They didn't admit that, but we know they did because there's videos of them. They took the bathroom door off in the basement where Chad's sleeping on a beanbag because they don't want him having any privacy because they're scared that he's going to go and do what teenage boys do. Okay. This is crazy. You cannot, okay, we're done with this. You cannot force your kids. And this is the problem with Ruby. You, you shouldn't force your kids to follow a strict religion like this. And, and 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 feel like that's like that makes them holy because it doesn't. I mean, we're we're gonna do some more, but there's more videos about the shit that Ruby has done. So this is called the shit that Ruby has done, part one. Uh, we're gonna do go part two, probably part three, part four. There's so many. These kids are being exploited. Ruby is a tyrant, and she is disgusting, and she will stop at nothing to make content.
And it's always at our kids' expense. And again, we've recapped here this, and let's, let's go back. I will lose my content when they go to school. That's what she's worried about. Sherry, going off to college, Ruby's a little bit pissed. Probably because Sherry says she doesn't want to be on YouTube anymore. She doesn't like the hate. Do you know why these kids get hate? Because their mother puts them on the internet. And there are douchebags on the internet who will throw hate all the time. Okay? They will always throw hate. But you put them out there. You put that out and you only... And a lot of times she makes her kids look bad because they're always getting punished on camera. But how bad their kids are. And so they're not, she's not even putting it forward that they're amazing. She's always putting forward that they're the worst ones. That they're the ones who are breaking the rules and all that shit. Ruby is the most disgusting family vlogger out there. I said it. Micah's gone now. But we're going we're gonna to recap about what's going on with Micah. Let's go down that another path maybe this week or next week. We got to recap on Micah because we got to talk about Stoffer Garage and how, it's, how he's getting away with it all. But between these two. And they were my earliest family vloggers I started covering. Ruby, if you're listening, and you probably are because you're, okay, you're like that. Stop being a bad mom. Go get counseling. And I mean, outside of the Mormon culture counseling, go get real parental counseling. Learn to be a real mom and maybe you can save the younger generation of your family from having to deal with the same shit that Sherry had to deal with and that Chad had to deal with. You need to chill. and You need to start understanding how to raise children properly because you have failed at it multiple times that young child that was crying in the van i forget his name already the guy that keeps getting pranked that kid in your family is the black sheep and everybody knows it and he's going to be the one that needs the most help out of this so do him a favor get him off the internet get him some help and start loving him more if not more than the rest because he likely needs it that's what i'm just seeing after watching this that kid needs the most love and you're gross for doing what you do everybody take a deep breath Whew. ruby Right? We don't like her. We do not stand Ruby. Gross. But I stand you. And I think you're amazing and valuable and incredible. I want you guys to remember one thing. You are beautiful. I think. You probably are. No, you are. You know what? You are beautiful. You are valuable and incredible. And the people in your life need you there. And I want to make sure you do good things for those around you. But always take care of yourself as well. I will... See you tomorrow.